they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm hooking them down. We turn the spots in the frowns. We can't hop out, then we clearing the crowd. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani. And who do we have in the building today? The biggest bread. I might give a nigga hope. I can't give away my heart. How you ain't got it, but you trapping niggas broken, pulling stunt. 20 k Oh, the biggest. Well, <laughs> yes, we here on another episode of Talk of the Town Show. Thank y'all for tuning in. So welcome back to New York, because I know we talked about it. You said you've been here before. How's your time been so far? I love New York. What you love about New York, sis? Everything. Really? What have you done that's been, like, fun since you've been here? And it could be working, too, because working. Um, I went to a Metro signing yesterday. It was just, like a good vibe and mm -hmm. I was like it was just crazy to see the line wrapped around the building so that kind of made me happy yeah they show him a lot of love out here what do you think about um heroes and villains I love it it's fire trance is my shit that's my that's one of my favorite songs on there what songs you be bumping on there I like creepers okay creepers is a good one too yeah. okay so since you've been here um have you been tapping in with anybody like any artists or producers out here um, I worked with Dizzy Bako. Okay, shout out to Diz. And I haven't been working with no artists out here. Okay. Would you like to? Is there anybody that you've been listening to out here? Um, Lola Brooke. They mm -hmm. don't play with the song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like that song. And um, I listen to Paris Bryant. Okay, okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I could definitely. I knew you were gonna say Lola because y'all have that hard sound. Like I feel like I could see y'all on a track together. Maybe one okay. day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So let's go through for those who don't know. I know you're from Chattanooga. So walk us through like what it was like growing up there. Chattanooga was fun. Like. It was everything. I mean, as a kid, long as you protected from what's dangerous and you running around like the hood and shit, like you having fun. You don't know like everything that's bad going on because mm -hmm. your parents blinded you from that shit. Like mm -hmm. you just having fun. Um, for the most part, as an adult, I really don't like too much wasn't interested in staying in Chattanooga because I feel like the world was way much bigger than that. Mm. So. Okay, so at what point did you decide to, and then you moved to what, Atlanta? No, I graduated at 16 and moved to Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Okay, shout out to you for graduating at 16. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm smart. Beauty and brains and talent, we love to see it. Okay, yeah. so you moved to Tennessee, and then what um, after that? I ended up signing a deal uh, in 2020, so from... September 2020, mm -hmm. like, I was just, you know, Atlanta, Murfreesboro, Atlanta, Murfreesboro. Okay. And I ended up um, moving to Atlanta last year. And um, by the time my lease was up, shit, I went home. Mm -hmm. And I'm back in Atlanta now. Okay. Now, when it comes to, like, Chattanooga, I'm not going to lie. I think the only person that I know that lived in Chattanooga, like, artist-wise, is Usher. <laughs> is yeah. there any other, like, artist or anybody out there that you be listening to or that you want to shout out that we should be tapped into? Um, Y'all got to tap into uh, uh, Hardaway 1K, um, Slat Zai, um, Tom P, Long Live Tom P. Um, his voice could just, like, it's just, I don't know. It's like, it enhance your mood. And then on top of that, like, it could just make you feel like you got somebody, mm. like, listening to him. He's a rapper, singer. He's a singer. Okay. He can rap, too, though. Oh, okay. I'm going to check him out. Okay. Um, Female-wise, I know in a few of my interviews, I really ain't been too much mentioning females or oh, i really ain't even just too much been getting deep into the chattanooga artists because mm -hmm. i've been forgetting but female wise we got robin J. okay shout out, um, shout out we got carmel kitty we got um her name is i think queen we got cara and then we got another one and then we got d rose popping out with it 
Okay. So y'all have a few up and coming yeah. artists, both male and female. I love to see that. So do you go back home often? Yeah. Yeah. And like, how would you compare Chattanooga? Now from your adult eyes, how would you compare like Chattanooga to Atlanta? Um, Chattanooga is just like so washed up compared to Atlanta. Like, mm. it's like now the Chattanooga females, like, I just love them because it's like they some real, like, get money, bitches, go get us. Atlanta bitches like that too. Mm-hmm. But Chattanooga females, like, they have, they have a lot of respect for themselves, like, they don't just go for anything. Like, you can't just, okay. you know, you can't. Chattanooga females, we we the ones running the game. Like, you, you can't run game on us. Is that a Chattanooga thing or is that like a Tennessee thing in general? Because, you know, the Memphis girls going up too. Yeah. And they bout that, <laughs> they bout that action as well. I feel like the same thing that you're saying I get from like a gloss up or a Glorilla so is it a Chattanooga thing? Is it a? See, I mean, and it's crazy because Memphis females like. Okay, we got Knoxville, Nashville, Chattanooga, and Memphis. Okay, Knoxville females are just dumb. Ooh, <laughs> like, but they a dog a nigga like they'll show you for real like yeah let me show you now since you don't play with me this much now let me show you oh you saying wait so they dumb over a nigga or they dumb dumb over a nigga okay but they real like they they, they get money like, okay and in any aspect they get money all right but they knoxville be, ladies like don't let these niggas get y'all in y'all bag y'all chattanooga like and memphis females they, they, they pushing p like okay i can see a memphis Female telling a nigga, man, I know you lying. Shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. And I could just see them running so much game. I could see a Chattanooga bitch running so much game and just so player. Like, mm-hmm. But you go to Nashville, these hoes bleed everything these niggas say. Oh, damn. You go to Knoxville, you, she know the nigga lying, but she finna text you. A Chattanooga bitch I ain't, I ain't texting a bitch about that nigga. And I don't really too okay. much seeing the Memphis hoes. Female text a bitch about they nigga like them the players them the player states. Then you okay. got Jackson Tennessee. You really put me on game here. Yeah. Like okay. So Jackson. You got Jackson Tennessee like that's the most freaked out city in Tennessee. Oh. Ooh. Like <laughs> they be giving it up. Over but they the females team. like they females the type like they embarrass a nigga like embarrass them like how embarrass like they them? gonna go. Laugh about a nigga. His draws like they gonna oh, put, but damn, you know what I'm saying damn, right damn. there. Deal with all that right, shit. Right, right. Like, I always think that like before <laughs> you, before you really expose your baby father, your ex for wearing them dirty drawers and all of that. Just remember at what point you was that still, was your man, your you, man, your man. You, you, you could stick through and it. You <laughs> was sticking beside. Okay. So okay. So that's interesting. Thank you for putting me on because I wouldn't have known that. And it's funny because like in New York we have like you know boroughs you have certain things that you associate with like ladies and even the niggas in different boroughs but mm-hmm. to hear it like in a different state and how y'all break it down in y'all cities is so interesting to me yeah so um what's like one of your favorite memories from back home um my favorite memory from back home is i gotta say um is a paintballing memory when i was with my cousin um Jaylen. He passed away. I got him tatted on my neck right here. Um, we was paintballing and we went to the projects and like we was like, cause I'm from the east side and it was mm-hmm. like the east was the east side was going against the west side. Like you know, everybody was going against everybody. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So it was like um, we had slid on them with the paintball guns or whatever. So. <laughs> As I'm running back, like we had this, it was probably like 16 steps, like mm-hmm. to get up, and it was like steep steps because mm-hmm. we in a project hallway, so you know it got to be real steep. Mm-hmm. So like we going up the project hallway, so I run up, but they too close behind me. I jump from the top of the 16th step and oh, end up girl. leaning backwards and falling down. 
So I, f- I knocked the wind out of my body. Oh, my God. And it was like I couldn't breathe. I thought I had to go to the hospital. How old were you? Um, I was 16. Oh, okay. So this is not that long ago. Yeah, but I had just, it was like March 2020. Mm. But um, but on our way there, we got pulled over. So I really was supposed to go home mm-hmm. right in and there. As soon as I got pulled over and somebody had to come get me. You see the way life works. They, it, yeah. The universe is going to tell you, see, you knew what you were supposed to be doing. And it wasn't this. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going to teach you a lesson real so, quick. I ain't called my mama after I thought I fit. I fell on my back and I um I knocked the wind out of my body. My back was in pain like that whole day. Mm. But we went and got my mom said don't have no boys in your car. So anyways, <laughs> like we 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 loaded up in that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And we we um spent through a hood called D Drive. Um it's in kind of like a quiet neighbor like mm, a little, it's right next to the east side. We spent through there, and um, a man had threw a pink power weight at my house, I mean, at my car, so we thought it was like a pink smoke bomb, like a paint, mm. a paint bomb. Mm-hmm. So we just started hitting his ass with the paintballs, like we fucked him up. Like, oh, so he got in his car, he chased us down, and um, we had finally got back on the east side. And he, he pulled up on the side of us. He was like, I want to fight. Oh, shit. So my cousin Jalen got out, and all the niggas got out the cars. And, like, mm-hmm. once he drove by and seen it was a whole bunch of niggas, we were standing with the door open. My cousin Jalen was standing right here, and I was standing right there. And I was like, we finna gang him. Next thing you know, he, dri- he driving his car real, real fast. Boom. My cousin Jalen pushed me in the car, and he jumped on top of the hood. He then The boy hit my door. What? And I could not close my door no more. So then that's when I had called my mom and we went to his house. Uh-huh. She and was it like, was I just, told you. <laughs> <laughs> she took my car. It was just so much. Oh my gosh. That's so crazy. But that sounds so fun. Yeah, that was my favorite memory. So you you reference the East and West Side a lot too. Is that like a thing in um in Chattanooga where it's like the East Side has a certain type of vibe or something like that and the west side has a different one um we got the east side the south side the west side and the north which is not it's not in a it's not in the north but we call it the north Mm. um the east side is where i'm from okay and it's just like it's just i love i love my hood i love it but my daddy from the south side. Mm-hmm. So, and my mom from the east side also. So, okay. But I'm a daddy's girl. Aww. So, whenever I was with my daddy, I was You'd out south. south side. Whenever I was out with my mom, I was out east. Mm-hmm. But I'm from the east. That's where my heart at. So, I just got to say the east side, the best side. I'm from the east, too. Not, not that east, but east New York. So, we got that okay. little connection between the New York Chattanooga connection. So, another thing that was really happy that you um, brought up was this memory because you spoke about your cousin, Jalen, who I know played a big role in your life. And you consider him to be like your brother. Yeah. Um, what Are there any things that maybe you've gone through with him or anything that he's told you that stuck? by you because i know this memory stuck by you but are there any words of advice that he might have given you or anything that you think about from time to time i don't want to talk about it okay i think they always gonna describe me as a grown ass little girl <laughs> but not in like a physical way but in a mindset way okay because i feel like a lot of times when Older people call younger kids grown. It's always like a negative stigma, whereas you can be grown. You just mature. So was it like a you was talking crazy and like all of that? Or was it like you were just more advanced for your age? Well, like I always done been more advanced, but I don't necessarily it be like talking crazy. Mm -hmm. It'll be me being smart. But saying it in a sarcastic way, like, mm. you know. Okay. Like, she too fucking grown. Right. Get your child. Right. Watch your mouth. Like, who, right. <laughs> who child did this? Okay. So, um, 
Now, when did you start making music? I've been making music all my life. Okay. But I started taking a career in music at like 17. Okay. 16, 17. So what was it that made you want to actually start taking it seriously? I just feel like I wasn't regular and I feel like I can't be a regular person. Mm-hmm. I just feel like I just had to be it, like, and that's what I wanted back then. But it be like, once you really get this shit and you get where you want to be, and it's some shit that you can't do, and you be like, damn, I wish I was regular. I'd be able to do this. Like what? Argue with people online. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, you be checking comments and stuff like that? Not no more, because I'm childish. And you reply back all day. <laughs> so I got time. We could get into it. Okay. So you don't check comments, but which is good. Because like you said, sometimes it'll get the best of you. And then you know people try to start pulling stories out of anything. So yeah. I'm glad that you were keeping it to yourself and you don't entertain it. And some people also do it for attention too. So yeah. There's also that. Um, so who were you listening to when you were growing up? Eight ball. Got them, Young Jeezy, Yo Gotti, Future, oh, okay. Cheeky. I, I I think I'm so toxic because, like, I just grew up on Future. Mm, um, the Toxic King. Young Thug. Um, Kelly Rowland. Okay. Kelly Rowland. You know what's so interesting? Because as you were listening, I'm like, there's no ladies on this list. Yeah, I, yeah, I always... I was getting ready to go Lady Crazy, though. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the girl that be like, uh, off the nook if you book song? Oh, I ain't me knocking. Who is that? I ain't ready to fight. I mean, that's a whole group, but I know you're talking individual. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, then. Well, shout um, out to her. Sorry, sir. <laughs> I grew up listening to um, Nicki Minaj, of course. Mm hmm. Um, so you have, Beyonce, shit, like all the R and B singers, like. So you have like a mixed bag. You was listening to a lot of variety. Yeah. Going up. Um. So, who would you say like was your inspiration while you were making music? If you had any. Um. Yo Gotti. Mm. And Young Jeezy growing up, like. That's somebody who really like you know. Was influencing me. What was it about them? It's just cause like, I like I said, I was a daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. So, the shit they rapped about, my daddy lived. Okay. Like, and I was just so infatuated with my daddy. Like, I wanted to do everything he did. Mm. Wow, I love that. You know what? I don't think I've ever heard of anybody reflect on their influences from a perspective like that. Like, yeah. not that they wanted to be like them or that they wanted to adapt their sound, but just, like, they reminded them of somebody who they loved and looked yeah. up to. I think that that's, that's dope. So, um, I know when you first started making music, you called yourself Hood Brat. Mm -hmm. And then I think that you were saying that you saw on, like, a blog or something like that that you shared a name with the other Hood Brat. From Love and Hip Hop. Well, I know her from Love and Hip Hop. Yeah. What was that like for you having to change your name? I mean, they were it really wasn't a problem. Okay. But I was mad because I'm like, well, I deserve that name. Like, I'm gonna want, I'm gonna be the one because I didn't I didn't know her from a can of paint. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of her mm -hmm. until like a vlog posted me and she commented. But. Like, I feel like I really deserve that name. But at the end of the day, like, when you really think of the business mind of this shit, like, you can't be a hood brat forever because I know I'm going you big with it. this shit. So, big brat. So, do you feel like that name fits you better? Yeah. Because it's like, I'm just, I'm so small, but mm -hmm. it's like, everything the I do is big. is big. Right. Yeah. And you started off, you said the biggest. Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, now when it comes to, like, the state of female rap right now, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on it? <laughs> I love what the fuck they doing, man. I like, do too, girl. I do too. If you know, 
in this period of time, females run the game right now. And I can honestly say that. I completely agree. What we a just time need, to be a female artist. We just need more albums out. Like, that's it. We just need to get more albums out. Mm. But right now, like, females running the game, and it's easy. Like, I, I make it all, I'm making all my sisters rap because I know how easy it is. Like, and plus, it's a drought on artists in the industry right now. Mm. Like, you think so? I, I, I oh, definitely you know so? think so. I know so. Hmm. Just for the simple fact, like, who new people have popped, but like, who have really, like, who's new that really popped? Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know. To me, I guess the reason why I second guess that is because I feel like there's just there's there's a lot of artists I think what we're lacking is a new sound but I think that there are a lot of artists that are making music that sounds similar because they think that that's what what's working and that's why it seems like it's taking so long for somebody else to pop because people are looking for something different and that's what's missing in my opinion well I'm gonna say this them sounds that's missing from the industry mm -hmm. are in these small towns like People just don't know what to do with their talent. Mm -hmm. And it's like, coming in this shit is hard. Like, mm -hmm. you just got to really have faith because it's like, it's a million. It's the whole world is trying to do what you do. Right. So it's a, it's a, everybody in the world is literally trying to get to these label people that's like, probably 1% out of the world. Like, mm -hmm. It's a million people trying to get to these people. So some people might be pushed back. But those sounds are definitely out here. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm the one that come across them a lot because, like, I'm coming from a small town and I'm I still move in. around in a lot of small towns. So I hear them a lot. But mm -hmm. they definitely there. So what do you think that you did differently to get yourself out there as opposed to those unheard voices that we don't really come across that often? See, I'm going to say this because, like, believe it or not, it's, it's out there somewhere else in the world, it's a million people that sound like me and I sound like them. Mm. Like, my baby sister, mm. she's damn near, when she rap, she can go in there and she can sound exactly like me. Like, you feel what I'm saying? That sound, okay. any sound could be recreated, but she has a different sound. You feel what I'm saying? What I did, what I just said, Somebody had to drill that in my mind. Like, Brett, you did something that a million people in the world are trying to do. It's a million people that wish that they could get signed. A million people wish that they could do this. Mm -hmm. But the way I went about it is I made sure I tapped in in so many small cities before I even let this shit be known to my own city that this is what I'm going to do. Mm, that's you know interesting. Saying? So you think that it's important to kind of cultivate your audience in the smaller spaces and then work your way up? Is that what you're saying? No, I just think, like, you should hop out on feet and really go hit the streets running with this shit. Like, I'm in, I'm in, this, city, I'm in this city for a few months. Mm. I'm locking in with these people by the time... And these people probably people who really known in the city. Mm -hmm. And then I pop out here fast these times. Everybody like, who the fuck is she? Let me go at her. Mm. Move. Move on. Next next state. Pop out here five, six times. Everybody, who the fuck is her? Let me go at her. Right. Boom. She started rapping and they already fuck with my vibe off. Meeting me five, six times. Right. Boom. That's supporters. Then everybody fuck with them. And I for strength for them, they going to fuck with me. So it's just, it's a, you got to be genuine. Okay. You know? I like that. So, what has your experience been as a female artist? Because, of course, as we all know, this is a male-dominated industry. Yeah. Um, not only are you a female, but you're also young. Right. So, what has your experience been? And not only what has your experience been, but has there been anything that surprised you so far um, since you've been in this industry? Um, at this moment, um, a lot of shit done surprised me, like, Cause it's not, it's a lot of people who's not in the industries that's telling you, oh, you know, them labels going to do this, they going to do that. Mm. <clears throat> and it's like, they telling you all this shit and you get in front of them and this ain't even that. You don't know what you're talking about. And it's a lot of people that think they know the industry, but don't. Mm -hmm. But as a young, a young artist coming in the industry and being a female is so hard. And it's just like. Everybody, first of all, 
I'm not gullible, but you can think that, mm-hmm. you know, like. That's what they, they automatically assume, especially, yeah, like, you know, being young. They think, oh, she she 19, you can give her this and she'll be all right. You can tell her this and you can tell her that. But they don't know, like, they think maybe because I'm young and I'm a female, they can just push, like, they females get, like, handled. And then you being young, they think they try to lowball you. Right. And I'm just here to say I ain't going for none of that shit. Absolutely not. Because, uh, you know, I think that this is something that is happening in real time. A lot of young artists are realizing their worth. Right. Whereas back then it would be like a lot of artists would just be happy to be in the building right. or just be happy to say that they're affiliated with a certain label or something like that. So right. I think now is the time people are being more open about it, open about knowing your worth and what you deserve and getting your money up front, whatever it is yeah. that it's it's. They still try because, of course, there are going to be a couple that fall through the cracks. Right. But it's good that you know, you know what you're doing now. Are you handling business by yourself? Do you have a team? What's like? What does that look like? Well, me, me being me, I could handle business by myself, but I don't. I have a great manager. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even know how the fuck she do the shit she do, but it just be like we just be on the go. Like, Shout out to her. Shout out Nini, that's me, yeah. <laughs> um, my two CEOs and Meezy and Hefe, like, they just too hands-on with me. Like, they know everything. When I move, it's rats moving. Yeah, she just went over there. Uh-huh. I love that. Okay. That's good. And I, I, I asked just because I didn't know, but I think it's so important to have a team. A lot of people like to, oh, I did this shit by myself. Like I'm handling this on my own. But sometimes it's really good to have a team that'll ground you, make sure you good and make sure you get yeah, in what you I need. Can, I get. can't. So I, I can't good. say that. I can say, I can say I got, I got to them. I got to my team by myself. Mm-hmm. But every like they just took so much weight off my shoulders. Like mm-hmm. that's dope. So, in the vein of being a female artist, um, Ashanti went on the Breakfast Club not too long ago, and she was talking about how there was a producer who basically wanted to exchange his services for sex, or like to take a shower with her, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, a, have there been any experiences where, like, you've come across any shady characters in the industry? Um, and then, two, are there any people who assume that you got where you got because of something, like, sexual or, like, you selling yourself down um, as a woman? I mean, that shit happened to, that shit happened to everybody, like, I'm talking about motherfuckers. It don't even be like maybe like I give a beat for you to fuck me or something, but it just be like you a vibe with somebody and they have end up having a crush on you. And it's like, bro, we handling business, gone. And mm-hmm. it's like, all right, I'm gone, but we cool. You know, it ain't went that far with me yet. Mm-hmm. Um and then what else did you ask me? If there are people who assume that Yes. Yes. I hear that a lot and like I handle business for real. Like, I stand on real business. I ain't got to do this and do that. Like, Mm -hmm. when you a real genuine person and you never cheat the process, that shit going to be done for you. Mm -hmm. Let them know. So, what are your thoughts on, like, the critics who say women, like, the tougher women in hip-hop need to tap more into their, like, femininity and their sexier side or make, like, sexier music? What do you think about that? Yeah, see... I'm one of the masculine rap, rapping females, I guess. Masculine rapping females, I guess that's what they call it. Um, I be I so like, like <laughs> it's like they they be like, damn, a nigga don't a nigga don't want no bitch like that. But it's like when you when we rapping like that and shit, it's like yeah, this was going on. But like if I was to gen- like genuinely love somebody, I would be so soft towards them. That shit, what I, how I act, yeah. wouldn't even be on them. So just keep them out of this mix. Cause right. This how I'm hard on y'all because y'all ain't mine or y'all ain't my family. Like, and it's not really for y'all. If yeah. you don't like it, you don't like it. Like, And that's what I don't understand. Like, 
A nigga don't want this, a nigga don't want that. Cool. But this is not, I'm not doing it for the niggas. I'm doing it for the people who fuck with my music. Right. So, and I'm doing it. I'm not even doing it for them because I'm doing this shit for myself. Cause this period. I, this that that way, part. You know, period. This Absolutely. how I'm feeling. You know, I'm I'm getting some stress out, or I just you know this happening. I'm finna let y'all know. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So when like let's say you get in a car with somebody that doesn't know that you're an artist, mm -hmm. and y'all talking and you let them know what's the first song that you play for them so that they could hear your music. Um, hope. Okay. Yeah, that shit is hard. By the way, you yeah, did that, it. and um, so you would play Hope. Is it because it's one of your more recent songs, or because it's one of your favorites? Oh, I play Hope because it's like I lost my mind on Hope. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like everything that I had to say at that moment, I said it on Hope. Like because it was like I just was feeling like y'all got me fucked up. I'm that bitch. Yeah, that's you why really I'm was like, your shit on these there. niggas got me fucked up. These bitches got me fucked up. And then, like, I'm slick bragging. Like, you know, my nigga gonna stand on smokers like I'm fucking on the devil. Like, I ain't worried about shit. My nigga gonna handle that. Like, you know, yeah. hope was just, oh my gosh. So, what does your creative process look like? Like, when you go in the stool, do you already have like something in mind, or is it like all happening in real time? Um, lately, I'm going to say this, I have not had an original Big Brat session in a minute. When I go, like, these last three months, when I have been going in the studio, like, I've been writing in the studio. Mm. Like, we just been vibing out in the studio, writing in the studio, like, to beats. But, like, originally, like, I would write at home. Mm -hmm. and find a beat and I already had a whole song finished before I get to the studio. Mm. Beat before song? Beat before lyrics or lyrics before a beat? Lyrics before beat. That's interesting. Because yeah. I know like some people listen to the beat and then they be like, mm -hmm. like coming up with what they want to say or like the rhythm of that they want to go with and then they... I, I feel like... I so make, that's so interesting. I make great music beat before lyric, but it's like, it's just so much better. Mm -hmm. Like... And so much more detail when I sit at home and write it. Because it's like, I'll go from the couch to my bed, to the floor. Like, play with the dog for a little while. Like, mm -hmm. laying on the counter and shit. Like, it's like a good phone conversation. I was, I swear I was just thinking, it's giving phone call vibes. Yeah, like, like it, up on the wall, a, walking through the yeah. house. Okay, I understand. So, that's dope. So, if you had to describe your sound, how would you describe it? I think I'm aggressive as fuck. But I come off aggressive, too. You come off aggressive, you saying, like, in general, or just... I mean, it's it's some, it's a, t a Tennessee thing. Like, Tennessee mm -hmm. females are just more aggressive. Like, mm -hmm. like, it's like, you know, females would be like... If we see a nigga we like, we like... Oh, yeah, you... We pushing the issue, like... Oh, oh yeah, you, you showing your shot? Yeah, like... Yeah, I like you when you coming home with me. Oh, y'all bobo. But you don't really be coming home with me. Y'all just going home with your number tonight. Like, uh huh. Yeah. See, I feel like a lot of people say that about New York ladies too. That we're aggressive, but I haven't made it to that that level yet. I mean, it's I like we aggressive, but it's a, just a different aggressive because it's not really too much aggressive. It's like we really be joking, you know. And it just to me it seems like you know what you want. You going after it. I definitely know what I want in life. Like, in every aspect of life, I know what I want. Mm -hmm. So, let's get into the tea. Because we, we did enough, you know. I I know you. We, we get to know you more. So, let's really get into it. So, first, I want to start off with, there's a video that I saw of you um, on top of a car. And you was like, how to handle a nigga who ain't shit or something. And you was breaking the windshield. How did you see that? I don't disclose my sources, so who sis. who is my Finsta page? I don't <laughs> disclose my sources, sis. What is tea with that? What happened? You really want to know what happened? I do. It ain't no tea. You watch my, my mu music videos, you see me smash. You see up. what's crazy? I was like, I know this is probably like a BTS. Like, you mm. was just like playing around or something. But I'm like, okay. But it does lead me to my next school. We, well, uh, we actually bought the car just to smash the windows. <laughs> And it still it's giving it, big budget. It still, it still drove and everything. Like, how did that feel? Smashing. Have you ever busted the windows out of somebody's car before? 
Oh yeah, mm. Jasmine Sullivan shit. I, no, I uh, I flat a tire. I was that was gonna be my next question. What's the craziest yeah. thing you've done over a nigga? I knew he wasn't at home. I parked my car down the street and I um, knocked on the door. His mom didn't even know he was beefing. She opened the door. She was like, "Hey!" And I was like, "Hey, don't tell him I'm here." <laughs> And I shit, I hid. And you was waiting for that ass at the door. Yeah, I was waiting. On, I was waiting on that ass. <laughs> like, what the fuck you think this is? Oh no! See, I so you uh, you of course was cool with his mother though. If you could be like, don't tell him that I'm here. Yeah, his mom and his sister like, don't tell him. Mm-hmm. They probably knew he deserved whatever it was that he got that day. So, what are your thoughts on just dating and like love at this stage? Because you know you going after your career. Yeah. Um, are you dating? No. Okay. What are your thoughts? <laughs> that note was real stern. What, what that mean? You you was like, no. Like, it wasn't even negotiable. Yeah. Absolutely not. No. So, what are your thoughts on dating right now? Um, My thoughts on dating right now is, for one, like, I'm focused on my career. And I have a real life. Mm-hmm. So, if I was to date somebody, like... They got to have a life, too, because, like, you can't be mad because I'm out all the time. Because I know when I dated somebody and I didn't have a life and they did, like, I'm, that, that's what really, like, had me, like, above, like, on my toes. Like, why you out this late? Why you ain't come home? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. you feel what I'm saying? So you just got to have your own life, too. So if they do, if they are out doing something, you got your own life. You're not worried about Right. You know, like, y'all, I mean, I don't think we should merge our lives together until we probably, like, 40, 30, 35, <laughs> not even at 30. Um, which would be merging lives together. Like, right. y'all, like, go from having your own separate things to doing stuff together? Is that what you mean? I mean, like, merging our lives together. First off, I'm 19. I don't want to live with a boy. As you like, should uh, This ain't, I, we ain't going 50-50 right now. Like, mm-hmm. I'll buy you stuff, but when you just buy me stuff, too. Catch me on the flip side. Yeah, you know, yeah. that was that was a whole thing recently when Glow said that she wanted to go. She's down for going 50-50 with her niggas. Everybody has something to say. So, you're pro 50-50. No. Oh. Like, I just, I don't, I'm too young to be staying with you. So, what we gonna go 50-50 on? Like. Okay. I'll pay my own rent. You pay your own rent. I pay for my own car. You pay for your own car. How but you feel about, like, going out, dates, activities? Huh? What that is going weird. on? <laughs> I thought it was an it earthquake. Felt like a, oh, yeah. <laughs> it felt like an earthquake in this bitch. Okay. Yeah, what What do you think about, like, 50-50 dates, activities, trips? See, um, I feel like when it comes to dates activities and trips Mm -hmm. dates i feel like they should always be taken care of by the man because like i didn't think that at first and my little vibe Mm -hmm. (laughs) he was telling me like stop doing that he was like i don't care if you like if you're going out with me or anybody else never offer to pay don't don't ever do that i think it's situational i think I learned the same thing the hard way Mm because eventually when you do that, you set the tone for these niggas and they're they're expecting it. But I think that sometimes, you know, you can take your man out. I I mean, no, I mean, like I wouldn't take a man on a date. I take a man on the trip. (laughs) Oh, you think it big. Yeah, because I mean, it's like you do it. You do everything. you, You do everything like. All day, every day, like all the way around the clock, like. Why not take you? Why why not pay for the trip? Like, because he you paying your own rent and he's paying his own rent and you paying your own car note and he's paying his own. But car this note. the thing, like sometimes it could be like, yeah, I pay my own, but Nick, like you fucking with a genuine, a real nigga, mm-hmm. he's that rent is going to be paid, that car it note is, is going to be paid. That but was I me will playing devil advocate. I but, like that, answer. but I will pay my own, like. I'm not asking you to pay it, but if you got a real nigga, he gonna, it's going to already be paid. You ain't got to ask. Right, but, right, right. Like, shout out to all the real niggas out there. To know, like, I, mean, I will pay my own rent. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, 
I just know, I just know like we can't go fifty fifty, but I just I just know a nigga gonna take care of that. Talk your shit, sis. But like and you said that real confident. Yeah, so I, just I know, know you yeah. mean what you say. Yeah, that's that's why right now like I talked to, I talked to somebody, but I ain't we ain't dating, we ain't, we ain't on all that. We just conversating, and you just okay. be in my peace when I'm just like got too much going on. I can call you. Okay, so that's we ta- fair. we talking on the phone. That's fair. So you ain't got to pay my rent and shit. Okay. So what yeah. type of like, what's your like ideal type of, like you like the hood niggas, you like the balance? I like, I like a made man. Like, mm. I like a man that take care of his family and take, handle his business. I mean, hood niggas are cool, but it's like, I'm too old for that now. Like, I got a career that's T that you just said that because you yeah. 19 saying you I too know, old for the right? hood niggas. It's like, it's just like, I'm just so grown now. Like, I can't do a hood nigga, baby. Like, I got, I have a crib. I have a career and I have a six-year-old baby brother that's damn near like my child. Mm-hmm. So you can't just, no, I don't need that type of environment around us. Like, when I, when I, when I was a hood bitch, that was, that was cool. Mm-hmm. You know, but, and still like, if I do talk to a hood nigga, it gotta be like a made man. Like right. he a hood nigga, but he ain't the nigga you ain't you gonna see in the hood. Like you mm-hmm. got you gotta go through a few people to talk also, to him. Like you, know, you, know type you feel shit. what I'm saying? You know what I have to say about you? Like through this conversation, like you really seem to have a great head on your shoulders. Yeah. And um you're very mature. And yeah. like it's just like speaking to you, I feel like I didn't really have any expectations, but I'm present, pleasantly surprised. Right. Because I feel like there are a lot of people out here, not only artists, but a lot of people who go up and they, they're they dense. They don't really have much substance or um, a lot to like speak on and stand on. And I feel like you're very sure of yourself. So right. shout out to you for that. Thank you. Um, But of course, I have to ask you, because the tea... With the famous twins. Yeah. That was you in a different place. Because the, the girl I'm sitting across from right now and who I saw in the lives and the videos and stuff, it looks like two different people at this right. point. So let's get into that as much as you're willing to share. Yeah. What is the backstory with that and where is it now? Like, what's the situation now? Um, I'm going to say this. All of this escalated of my song being stole for one. For two, me reacting like I'm 19, you know? Like sometimes I react out of being young. Like I should have carried that as I carry myself now. But it was like I was just so angry at the moment. Like I reacted in an angry way. Like I reacted before even thinking about mm-hmm. reacting, you know? And in the position I'm in now, I just feel like. I'm not going to look for problems, so nobody should be approaching me, you know? Mm-hmm. And plus, like, I got to make it home by any circumstances because I take care of my whole family. Mm-hmm. Like, by any means, I got to right. make it home. So right. anything I need to do to make it home, like... So, so is this an ongoing thing? Have y'all resolved the issues at this point? At this point, like... It's no issue on my end, mm-hmm. and it shouldn't even be an issue on anybody else's end because it's like that shit does not matter to me. Like, right? I don't even. That's not like you know. I don't even think about them. Like, yeah, and I think that you know it's a part of growing up, and it's also the annoying thing about growing up while you're in the spotlight because there are certain things like even me I look back on when I when I was 19 17 even and I'm like damn I really wish that I moved differently in this situation or I really wish that there was a different outcome with x y and z but when you're in the spotlight and you have people in your face with a phone or you have people going live or something like that it gives you very little grace to realize what you could have done differently in a situation and right. like grow from it without it still being attached to you. Right. But I'm going to say this, like mm-hmm. shit happens, man. And absolutely. Thank God the situation didn't go any far. Mm-hmm. It's just pointless. You know, like every, I've been living my life like all this year, 
and it didn't happen. But once I get in the spotlight, it happens. Yeah. So I'm not worried about it. Like, yeah. I'm still living my life. Like, I'm in New York right now. Been here seven days, damn near. As you should. And I'm having a good time, shit. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to ask you, and this is the last thing we got to talk about on that topic, is has was there anything that you learned from that situation that you'll carry on with you moving forward if anything else like that arises? Because you said it started from them stealing your Was that the act up? <clears throat> okay. Ah, you know a lot. And <laughs> <laughs> I should. This is my job. Yeah. Um. So it was that. Okay. So let's say hope you know is out, and then you just happen to be scrolling on YouTube, and somebody that called a name Small Spoil Girl or something. She got your whole your whole song different beat. How do you approach the situation then? And this is I. First of all, when I was fifteen and I approached the situation, it was direct message. Mm -hmm. begging please delete it it wasn't deleted and then it hit the media but I it wasn't a song that I could just go and strike down or anything like that so if this would happen in this me being 19 and this happened I wouldn't say nothing at all I got okay. the best lawyer in the game period you let your lawyers do the talking yeah my lawyer gonna back that shit up Okay, love that. You see, like I said, yeah, I could tell even before I asked you that, just in talking to you, that who I'm sitting across from right now is different than what I was seeing. So I'm very yeah. happy that you were able I'm to set a, I'm a, Like, I'm going to say this to anybody watching this video. Like, anything you see on social media, like, never take that shit and run with it. You got to get your own vibe. Mm. Yeah. That's tea. So now what I want to ask you, too, is... Let's say you had a documentary made about you. You know, when the documentary first start, they got yeah. the person that come in the camera, like, yo, we good, we good. Like, and they start talking. Who would, if, let's say it was right now, who would be the first person in your documentary to talk? And what do you think that they would say? My daddy would be the first one in my documentary to talk. Because, like, that's my best friend in the whole wide world. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just would let him talk. And then, like, it just got to be wrapped up by my mama, though, because, like, she going to end the show, and she going to end it exactly how it should be ended. Okay. But um, my dad, like, I got to give it to my dad. Um, and what do you think he would say about you in the beginning? My dad has a crazy wor a word play, <laughs> and... I don't know what he's going to say, but I know that's just going to be the way to start the movie. <laughs> you kick it off the right way. Okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense to me. Okay. So now, next part of it is in the documentary, of course, they would talk about you being signed. Uh -huh. Not only being signed to 21 and Metro, which shout out to you. Congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. But you've been signed twice. Yeah. And that is big, especially at your age. Yeah. Um, so now before we get into the 21 and Metro conversation, what happened with your previous situation when you were signed? Um, shit, they just dropped me. Mm. Now, was it like, a you weren't doing what you were supposed to be doing or. I don't want to talk about it, but okay. just know I was put on a shelf. Mm. I was put on a shelf and like. Shit, it's just it's too much. I was put on the shelf though, and that I was just shelves for like eight months. I was shelved for like from yeah, I was shelved for like eight months, and then like I begged them to drop me on three three occasions that I had some better uh, better opportunities on the table, mm -hmm. and then they didn't. And then like when all that shit went away, they finally like bye. Right. Yeah. Okay, so now fast forward. Now, do you feel like the situation that you're in now is better than what you were in before? Yeah, I feel like it was just like that back then. That was a right now situation. Mm. I just jumped the gun for the money. Mm -hmm. Right now, this situation is like it ain't about no money. Right, it's like it's just the right situation, and it's the most genuine situation. Like, and it ain't even a situation no more. Like, we family. So. First of all, that's the reason I love that. Now, walk us through how that even happened. How did you get connected with 21 and Metro? Um, Savage manager 
found me on Instagram and hit me up. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, like, you know, I just been with their ass every day. And you know, we just signed. <laughs> okay. So how was that? Because I know it was a big moment for you, of course, because at the end of Hope, you have, like, the little clip of you being signed, right? Yeah. Um, of them signing. So I know that that was a big moment. Like, what were your thoughts while that was happening? I'm not a big thinker. So it'd be like, <laughs> I just be chilling, you know, like. Okay. This shit cool as hell, you know. You say you're not a big thing. Do you hear your thoughts when you think? When I'm mad, yeah. Only when you're mad? I just learned that it's only a small percentage of people that hear their thoughts. And when I'm praying. Them. Oh wow! When I'm like when I'm when I'm pr- when we praying, and we at church and shit, I hear my thoughts. I don't, I don't know. Two complete opposite ends of the spectrum. When you're mad and when you're praying. Yeah. Won't he do it? So now, okay. So you got signed. Now another point, uh, another point that was big um, in that process was when you got your chains. Yeah. Um. Now, what was that like? When you got your chains, how were you feeling? Did you know that it was coming? When they, when he, I think this the first chain mm-hmm. that he put around my neck. First of all, like, my heart was already racing because I was scared. Um, we had just left the freak neck, and Metro was like, oh, I, yeah, I need to talk to you about something. My heart just started racing, like, the whole way over there to where we was going. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what he need to talk to me about? Like, what? I just kept thinking, like, what, what? So we got there, and I'm like, he was taking all day to get there for one, so I was going to get ready to go home. Mm-hmm. Like, we was getting ready to leave. So um, I had walked to the store, and he was like, where you at? I'm over here, and I'm like, we finna, I'm finna walk back over there. He's like, all right. I'm like, damn, he just, he out here too? Like, what? what's going on? Mm-hmm. So we went back over there and shit, and, like, they was acting like they was giving Savage a gift, but... Like, it was really giving me chains. And my heart was already racing because I was scared of, for the talk. So when he put the chain on my neck, I just felt it beating against the chain. Oh. Like, <laughs> so what does the chain mean? Because I know, like, I've seen a few things online, people making suspicions about what it symbolizes or stands for. What does the chain mean? It says it at the bottom. Illuminati. Okay, and, and care to elaborate? Slaughter Gang. Um, Boominati is Metro's booming organization. Okay. That's his, that's like his heart, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Boominati is like boom, coming from booming, Metro mm-hmm. booming, mm-hmm. and then Illuminati. But Boominati is really the opposite of Illuminati. Heaven. Okay. Has there yeah. been anybody like that has now I know that you addressed this already, but like on a personal tip, are there people who come up to you like assuming that it has something to do with Illuminati that doesn't know? Or Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, but I mean like if they don't know, I just be like, Where the fuck you been? Mm. This past little decade or two where metro been running the world like where right. the fuck you been because they in the comments they they talking about it so yeah. happy once again you were able to clear the air on that too so that they know that you have no affiliation with hey, you so funny you so funny man i'm just saying because that's it's what like, they no it's like the, the the people that do the interviews always do like yeah that's what they were saying because <laughs> it is what they say <laughs> well you say you don't read comics so yeah. maybe that's why but i i seen it i saw it for you somebody somebody um walking past me uh as like people walk past me and ask me that's how i knew people had suspicions of it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now when it comes to change in general what do you think is the significance in the hip-hop community specifically of gifting chains because that's always it always comes across like a rite of passage yeah so like what like what does it mean to you to get to be gifted a chain shit i guess that shit just mean like welcome to the family you know mm-hmm your chain give you your superpower like mm. it's just you know just give you that artist look or just give you that producer look or that goddamn whatever you is your chain is like the superpower and make to it official making you who you is like and it just really chains are just really too much so like 
Yeah, I live it up. Mm -hmm. And now, do you feel any added pressure being signed to two people who are so, like, influential in the hip-hop community? Um, I wouldn't say I feel pressure, but I just feel like, like, one, my CEOs are them niggas. Period. So I'm that bitch, and I got to let y'all know I'm that bitch, and I ain't finna put out anything that's not giving that bitch. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so are, is there, like, any conversations that they be having with you? Like, do they give you words of encouragement, advice? Like, how does that look, that dynamic look? Metro, Metro, um, like, he's a very, like, spiritual person. So, like, he gives, like, tr just trust in God, you know, mm -hmm. like. And also, he tells me, like, keep writing on paper. Mm. Savage, um, his biggest, like, thing that he didn't have to tell me, but he was like, just don't be gullible, you know? Right. And Meezy, he just, like, because Meezy kind of like a CEO to me, too, because it's like, he really, like, take care of everything. Mm -hmm. Um, He, like... He just, he tell me everything, but he be like, I know you know. That's why I'm so proud of you because you already know. Like, right. You know. So, wait, you said something interesting about Metro that he said continue writing on paper. Yeah. So, is that like as opposed to writing in your notes, like on your phone, or is that just like keep writing your shit? Well, like, uh, the first time Savage seen how my recording session go mm -hmm. went, mm -hmm. um, it was like a meme me in Metro session and he came in and I, before Metro got there and I was writing on paper he was like you write mm. on paper he oh. was like that's interesting yeah he was like especially now he was yeah he was like I ain't seen that in a minute and then he was talking to us we chopped it up for a minute and then he went home Metro came in and he was like you write on paper and I was like <laughs> Yeah, he was like, that's interesting. He was like, <laughs> not those you got to keep doing thing. it. So how do you make sure that you don't, like, lose your stuff, lose your material? You must be very organized. I wouldn't say I'm very organized, but I just, I ain't, lo I ain't lost it yet. And won't. I don't got no wood to knock on, but. So, um, <laughs> okay, so now what have been, if any, like, the perks? And we're going to move on. After this, but like the perks of signing to a label like Slaughter Gang as opposed to a more corporate type of situation. Um, I just feel like my CEOs, my big brothers, with like they genuine. They ain't, it ain't about a dollar. Mm. Like they don't give a fuck about no money. Like they not trying to make no money off me. Like. Mm. They really genuinely just want to see me win, right? And it's like the major labels, like they just see a dollar sign. Like, and just, I mean, you have the experience, so you're not just talking; you yeah. literally going through it. So it's what you, what can you make me? Like when you can't make them nothing, it's mm -hmm. fuck you. Mm -hmm. Like my CEOs would never, ever treat well, me how a, a major label would treat me. I definitely love that for you, and I really wish you well in that situation. Well, I know you said it's not a situation, it's a family, but yeah. moving forward, just seeing that, it's really, really dope. A lot of people probably would love to have the opportunity, so you have it. We love to see it, and congratulations again on that. Thank you. Um, So I saw also um that you had, like, a picture with Drake. That was real cute. Yeah. Um, have there been any other, like, run-ins with, like, more mainstream artists that you really liked that you like think about or that surprises you that you even in the same rooms mm. drake introduced me to little baby so okay like you know that was cool because like little baby like i love little baby mm -hmm. okay what you say about little baby like yeah shut up <laughs> <laughs> shut up his mad funny yeah like <laughs> Okay, so, like, how is it? Because I know that you in Atlanta now. Mm -hmm. So, like, what is that like now? You around there, you in the mix, you are around a lot of these artists who are mainstream. What does that feel like? 
She ain't the same shit being okay. around my friends. Because, I mean, you wouldn't know these niggas rappers unless they tell you. Mm-hmm. Like, if you ain't have no phone and was just blind to the world, you wouldn't know. Now, is it like a, a chill, non-music related vibe? Do y'all listen to each other's music, give feedback to each other? Like, what is it? Like, how does it? I mean, everybody, like, we'll play some shit, but other than that, like, we be vibing. Okay. Like, Everybody be vibing, but right now it's at a point where like everybody want to know what Big Brat doing. Mm-hmm. Everybody want to hear Big Brat like. So when Big Brat needs an honest opinion on something that she's gonna put out, who's the go to? Uh, the first person. My first person I would go to is Nene, but I'll go to Harold too. Okay, Twenty One Little Harold, I'll go to him too. Okay, shout out Nene. <laughs> so how do you manage like your personal life and your work life like your friends and family what does that balance look like I mean um with my friend how I balance my friends and my family like I'm really to, at a point where like I'm pushing them into this life like oh really yeah like, well I know you said that about your sister and your friends yeah so you trying to but to make music or to be in the back end, wherever they fit in? I just got a bad habit of making everybody rap. Like, <laughs> I can make you rap. Oh, listen, all I need is a couple pulls, and I'm quick to pull out a little tight beat. Okay. <laughs> Start freestyling. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's mad funny. But how I balance it is because, like, you can't, first of all, you can't bring your personal life onto your artist's life, like, Mm-hmm. You can't you can't do that. Like, say for example, if I was going through a breakup, like I can't get online and bash this person because it's like now everybody in the business and it's like mm-hmm. you know because I ain't, I ain't no regular person now. Right. If nobody knew me, yeah, your ass to be fat up on social media, right? But everybody <laughs> know me, so I can't get on here and say fuck that nigga. He did this and let me go laugh about this nigga. Like I can't do that. Yeah, you can't go all bad like that, sis. But, so, okay. Like, you just, I don't know. You got to keep it separate. Do you have days where you, like, dedicate to family and friends, no work? Definitely. Or, yeah. Like, um, the days my baby brother come in town, mm-hmm. I don't do not, nothing. Unless he's like, I want to see you go work in the studio. Then I would go. Aww, but if he don't right. say it, then I won't do it. Okay. Okay, that's really nice. So now when it comes to friends, like, are you like a no new friends type girl? Are you like open to making new friends as you go along in your career? What are your thoughts? Genuine. Like, if it's genuine, Mm -hmm. it's genuine. Like, I ain't tripping. You got to meet new people. Like, this person can genuinely have something to offer for you, but want to. But want a genuinely private like friendship, mm-hmm. you know, not even private like a behind the scenes of your career, like right. uh, outside the career friendship, and they are genuine, like, or like you might fuck around and meet a groupie, like that's you done pass that I done passed to the bros or something, and it's like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like yeah, like I my we if it's a pretty girl, I will say hey, my brother like you, yeah. Okay, so you're mean like a wing like, woman to your bros. I mean, like, I do have brothers, and I am a rapper, and it's like, I'm a female rapper, so right. I mean, bitches, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like. You a real one for that, honestly. Yeah, I love uh, that. I don't play. My my All my brother got to say is, oh, she cute. I'm like, yeah, all right. Hey. <laughs> he wants you. Okay, so if you had to describe yourself in three words, what would you use? Three words? Yeah. I would say I'm um, very passionate. Okay. I'm um, genuine and I'm nonchalant. Okay. It gives. Yeah. I can see that. All right. And then now, like, when it comes to, like, the bigger picture, what is it that you hope to get out of this music career? I just want to be um, the next Jay-Z. Mm. Okay. Now, is it just you, you want to be the next Jay Z in terms of him being such an influential part of the culture? Is it that mm-hmm. you want to be business and music? Like, what is it about Jay Z that makes you use him as an example? I mean, I don't know because I'm 19 years old, but yeah. in my eyes, 
I feel like Jay Z one of the biggest male influencers right now, and like yeah. he have his own label, he got his own building. It's no female artist that stand. I mean Beyonce, she's most like the most powerful in my eyes. Mm. But like, well, do Beyonce have a label? No, I don't think so. She, she does. She does. Oh, duh, yes, they definitely are my baby. I'm my, sorry, I love you, Beyonce, and I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I didn't know Beyonce had a label, but rap-wise, I want to be, like, the next female Jay-Z. Like, I want to be, like, the biggest influential in the industry, like, have my own label. Like, I just want to help, mm-hmm. you know. I don't, I don't, I'm not in this shit for no money. Like, I just know that. I have the power to do what I want to do. You have the power and the potential. Right. I definitely see it. So what can we expect from you next, Big Brad? What are you working on? What can we look out for? Um, I have a um, single that's about to drop. Okay. And it has a feature on it. I'm just, I'm going to hit them where, I'm going to hit them like, I'm going to hit them so hard out of nowhere. It's going to be like an earthquake. Oh, um, hold on. Because you said out of nowhere. So I got to get my thoughts together because I, I assumed who your feature was going to be. But I think I'm wrong. Who you think it is? I thought it was going to be, of course, like a Metro or a 21. Only because I know that you talked about um, in an interview I saw you do, you said that you and Metro had worked on something. Yeah. So I'm like, hmm, something's coming out. Yeah. And I'm trying to, you know, do my little detective work. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the one. See, a Metro and a Savage collab, like, that's something that's all, like, that shit already, like, you know, that, there's no problem. Mm-hmm. Um, Because, I mean, that is, like, you know. But this one is like, it's just, it's not going to. All right. <laughs> Male or female? Any, many, money more. Nah. <laughs> it's a male. <laughs> it's a male do. artist. Okay. Nice little dynamic there. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So is there anything else before we wrap up that you want to talk about? Let the people know. Anybody want to shout out? The floor is yours, sis. Shout out my label, that's me. I'm in this BB TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, shout out to the gang, though. Shout out to my family, you know. Shout out to everybody, goddamn, who pushing behind me. Well, thank you, Big Brad, for stopping by. Period. I hope you have a safe flight back home. We're really happy to have you here. And we're looking forward to seeing all the things that you have coming. Period. Thanks for having me on here. Of course. Bye, y'all. Toodles. <laughs> <laughs>